Millions of Americans are feeling disconnected, with little to no access to broadband internet. The coronavirus pandemic has only heightened the importance of the issue as remote learning and work-from-home setups strain broadband infrastructure. According to the Federal Communications Commission, roughly 14.5 Americans lack standard broadband a number that some organizations claim is actually nearly triple that amount. Sarah Ewell Weiss reports on how the federal government is now looking to invest billions more in reliable broadband in her latest piece for CBS News, and she joins me now. So, Sarah, what's considered standard broadband, and why do experts say that connection is no longer enough? When you look at broadband and you look at the internet, think how much it has changed since 2015. And that is when the standard was last set by the FCC. I spoke to the former FCC commissioner who was there when that standard was set, and he said it's absolutely inadequate with the internet usage going on today. And what it is, is it's 25 megabytes per second download speed and three megabytes per second upload speed. Some experts are saying that should actually be 100 megabytes per second download download and 25 megabytes per second upload. And one of the problems is, is multiple people are not using the internet in the same way as they used to. While we think of it a lot as downloads, uh, a lot of people are now using it to upload, be it for social media, with images, also for video in terms of Zoom. And then when you have all these people using the internet, suddenly you had the pandemic and that added additional iPads on the internet, it added additional phones, additional laptops. And all these people suddenly using it, it's just going to continue grow as people continue to work from home. And so experts and many lawmakers are now saying that the standards need to be increased even more moving forward. Well, Sarah, Congress included the emergency broadband benefit as part of the COVID relief package passed back in December. Can you explain how the program works and who's eligible? Sure. So when we talked about that 14.5 million people, those were people who were lacking access to broadband. There are millions more who are lacking access because of affordability. And when you speak to experts who work with many low-income Americans about what is affordable, as much as $15, $10 a month is a serious expense for them. And many plans are $60 or more. Uh, so what this is, is this is emergency funding to subsidize the price of internet for low-income income Americans. Many of these people are already on other programs, be it the SNAP's food benefit program or Medicaid. And what this does is it provides $50 a month for these families to afford the internet. Uh, for those living in households on tribal lands, it's $75 a month. So this helps them be able to afford it on a monthly basis. There's about $3 billion in this program, so it's until the funds run out. There's also funding specifically to provide for folks to buy the tools needed to use the internet. Uh, it's about $100 to help buy a laptop, to help buy an iPad, so that low-income Americans can use the internet. Um, and many advocates have praised the emergency relief that has been provided in that December bill. However, they do note it is temporary and there needs to be a long-term solution to help Americans afford the internet moving forward to stay a part of the digital uh, economy. And Sarah, President Biden is also pushing to invest $100 billion in reliable broadband as part of his Americans jo American Jobs Plan. How would this funding be allocated, and how could better broadband actually impact the job market? Well, there's a— uh $100 billion, as you noted, and the goal for this in the infrastructure package that the president uh, unveiled is to provide broadband for all Americans across the country. There's an emphasis on folks who are lacking access to broadband. Um, and so that is something that actually has bipartisan support. When you look at uh, the GOP plan uh, framework for infrastructure, they also include about $65 billion for broadband infrastructure. So while there's a debate over how much money is necessary and where to allocate it, there is not really a debate over the need to do this. Um, and this will definitely help the economy. Uh, the Deloitte recently had a study that said that it, by investing 10 percent more access to broadband in 2014, it would actually have resulted in over 875,000 additional jobs by 2019. They also looked at it in terms of expanding uh, the speed for broadband, and they said that would also help increase jobs. Um, 
something to keep in mind when you look at this from a local level. I spoke to one woman out in Wisconsin. She owns multiple restaurants, and she tells me that she actually is trying to hire workers. Um, she's offering the jobs, but the reality is, is folks do not want to locate, uh, relocate to Wisconsin for the summer, where she's looking for folks for the busy tourism season because of specifically the lack of broadband access. College students, young uh, Americans don't want to end up in a place where they aren't connected to the outside world. And so the unreliable internet there has been a problem for her. Something else to keep in mind in terms of ec uh, economic output is just think about the ec uh, economic mobility of folks who don't have the tools to learn on the internet. Um, when you think about students who don't have the internet for school and they don't have the laptops and the iPads, it's actually hindering their ability to build very important skills for when they enter the workforce later. And that can keep them, that can hold them back um, economically in the long term. Certainly we have seen that acutely during this pandemic. All right, Sarah Ewell-Weiss, thank you. Thank you.